Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, we're going to hit the slopes. Our lesson is on finding slope, so let's begin. Today, our objectives are that you, the student, will find the slopes of lines and that you will know how to interpret the slopes of lines as rates. What I want you thinking about today is how can you compare two rates on a graph? Because that's what we're going to end with. So we find a rate, but then what can we do with that? So let's review some key facts about slope. Slope is the measure of the steepness of a line. So you've ev if you've ever been on a ski mountain, you know that there are three different colors, a green, a blue, and a black trail. Those describe the steepness of the trails. So mathematically speaking, it's the same thing. If we're looking at a graph, it's no different. The slope of a line tells you how steep the line is, whether it's in the real world on a ski mountain or if it's on a graph. And what slope is, slope is a special rate, okay? Slope is the rate of change between any two points on the line. And the larger the slope, the steeper the line. So think of the black diamond on a ski mountain being the steepest part of the mountain. Slope is a ratio. Slope can be found using what we call rise over run. My students often like to think of a staircase. So when we're talking about a staircase, you rise and then you step on the runner. Or if you go down, you have to go down the rise before you can step on the runner. So if you look at a staircase, you're going to see that this pattern, you probably see a piece of molding forming this line going up, and then you have your staircase going up. And on this, you can see that I can make a smaller st step. Rise one, run two, rise one, run two, rise one, run two. So we're going to say that our rise is one over our run of two, so the slope of this line is one half. You could also go to these two points. I'm going to rise two and run one, two, three, four. Two over four simplifies to one half. So between any two points, you can use this rise over run and simplify, and you will come up with the same slope between any two points for any line. So we talk about our rise being our change in y. So we're talking about our vertical distance, our distance on our y-axis, and how much do we go up from one point to the other. So if I start at the origin here and I go to this point, I have to rise 1, and then it's over the change in x, so our horizontal change. How many units do I have to go across before I'm at the next point? So I have to go up 1, rise 1, run 2. All right, I would like you to pause the video and find the slope of this line using the idea of rise over run. Make sure you simplify. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So slope is rise over run. So I have a rise of three. It was counted out for you. One, two, three, all over a run of six which simplifies to one half. Look at this. Rise one, run two. Rise one, run two. Rise one, run two. So you could make smaller steps or bigger steps, but when you simplify, you get the same slope. Your turn again. Now you have to count. Go ahead and pause, find the slope, and come back. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So we're going to use rise over run, starting at the origin. I'm going to run up to, you don't always start at the origin, but the origin is on this line, so I can. Rise to, one, two, three, four, five, two over five. That is in simplest form, so the slope of my line is two over five. I like my students to leave the slope as a fraction. You could write it as a decimal. You could have answered 0.4 as long as your decimal terminates. If you have a repeating decimal, you must leave it as a fraction. Try another one. Please pause and come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. 
I hope you weren't tricked on this one. Our intervals on our y-axis are not increasing by 1. So when I rise, this is not 1. This is 2. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8. However, our x is still just increasing by 1. So to be safe, you could look at these two points and you look at the y values and you see that going from 5 to 8, I'm going to go up 3. So this is this halfway mark is 1. So 4, 5, 6. So 1, 2, 3 over 1. So my slope is 3. You could have started at this point, 2, 4, 6, over 1, 2. 6 over 2 simplifies to 3. So no matter where you start, as long as it's a point on the line, you're going to have a ratio that simplifies to 3. So the slope of the line is 3. So again, be very careful that you're paying attention to the change in intervals. Now let's talk about a big vocabulary word called constant of proportionality. If a graph represents a proportional relationship, the slope is referred to as the constant of proportionality, reminding you that the graph of a proportional relationship is a line that passes through or begins at the origin. So it's kind of like calling a square a square instead of a rectangle instead of calling the slope of a line that passes through the origin and is a proportional relationship, we can call it the constant of proportionality, which is just one more way to say the slope is of a proportional relationship because we have this proportionality here. It's a constant proportionality. And every ordered pair on the line simplifies y over x to be the slope or the constant of proportionality. So every single ordered pair simplifies y over x to the simplest form is the same. Let's show you this, okay? So we're gonna talk about constant proportionality here. So you're given, see it has the ordered pair zero, zero. So we're gonna graph the data. Then we're gonna find the constant proportionality, which just means find the slope. But here's the thing, when you're being asked to find the constant proportionality, any one of these data points y over x is equal to the constant proportionality. So remembering it's y over x, so 10 over 2, 10 divided by 2, or 20 divided by 4, 30 divided by 6, 40 divided by 8, or 50 divided by 10. I hope you already have in your mind what the constant proportionality, which is the slope, is equal to. So I would like you to pause graph the data, find the constant proportionality, and interpret it just as you would interpret a point or a unit rate. Come back when you're ready to check. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So the first thing we're going to do is find the slope. 20 over 4 is equal to 5 and interpret our slope. So here we have all of our data graphed and two hours babysitting was ten dollars four hours was 20 six hours was 30 and eight hours was forty dollars and you can see that if you work zero hours you earn zero dollars which makes sense who's going to pay you money if you haven't babysat so we can go up 10 and over 2 10 over 2 is 5 20 over 4 is 5 40 divided by 8 is 5 interpreting this constant of proportionality or the slope you earn five dollars per hour babysitting so now let's compare this let's use what we've learned to compare so i have two lines on the graph the green line represents you and the amount of money that you earn babysitting the blue line represents your friend and what they make babysitting so looking at this, who do you think made more per hour babysitting, you or your friend? And be prepared to explain how you know. Okay, so hopefully you looked at this and noticed that because the blue line is steeper, it's increasing at a faster rate, 
we know that the friend earned more money just by looking at the graph. But now let's prove it mathematically. So we know that 28 divided by 4 is 7, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. So your friend made $7 per hour babysitting, and you made $5 per hour babysitting. But because we know that the steeper line has a higher unit rate, a higher slope, we know that without doing any math, just to answer this, friend, this question, that your friend made more money per hour. So now you're being asked, how much did you make per hour babysitting and how much did your friend make per hour babysitting? Which we already went over. So you have already found yours, 20 divided by four, you make $5 per hour babysitting. And because this line starts at the origin two, 28 over four is seven, telling you that the friend makes $7 per hour babysitting. I hope you enjoyed our time visiting and learning about slope. Please subscribe to my channel and I hope you have a great day.